Now, along with size, dial color is one of the number one qualifiers when looking to buy a watch. And green in particular is a color that has been on an absolute tear over the last couple of years. So with this in mind, what I wanted to do in this video is look at some of the best green dial watches at a wide range of prices, as well as some different categories to go along with it. So we are of course not going to be able to include every single green dial watch. So in addition to this list here, if you want even more at the end of this video, we'll have a link in the description to our comprehensive blog, looking at some even additional picks on top of the ones highlighted in this video. And for this video, we have three specific categories that we're gonna be looking at. One is going to be the everyday category. So a watch with a lot of versatility, maybe some sporty upside as well as being able to be dressed up in certain scenarios. Then we move into the diver category. There was enough dive watches here that it felt appropriate for it to have its own designated category. And then we'll have a refined category, something with maybe some dressy upside, also might have some complications involved, but that was the other bucket that it made sense when we started to compile a list where we wanted to fit some more watches in. So as you guys know, teddyballster.com is a full authorized dealer of around 30 brands. But what I wanted to do was anybody watching this video, if you spend over a thousand dollars on the site and use promo code TBWallet at checkout, you'll get a handmade wallet for free. This is from a company that I really like. This is called Ashland Leather Company. We ended up just buying these and I actually use one of these personally on a day-to-day -day basis. I have one of their wallets in Shell Cordovan. These products are produced in Chicago. They're also sourcing the leather from an iconic tannery in Horween, probably one of the best regarded tanneries in the world, especially in the United States, having history going back a hundred years. I'm a big fan of leather goods, Goodyear welted boots, things of this sort, just handcrafted types of products in the leather goods sphere. So this was something I wanted to do just to tie in something else I'm interested in with the site. Definitely check it out. Only going to be for the first five people that purchase. Use TV Wallet at checkout. So we're going to go in general ascending order here, starting with this everyday category. We'll begin with the Tissot PRX. We'll have two options here and I'll also throw in an honorable mention, but the PRX Powermatic 80 version with its green dial waffle texture. Then I'll also throw in the PRX mint dial. This is going to be a quartz option. In terms of size and wearability on wrist, generally the same. You're talking about a 40 millimeter case, lug to lug of 44.1 millimeters. I would add an additional four to five millimeters in terms of the perceived size on the wrist on that lug to lug end. Wears very true to say a 40 and a half to 41 millimeter case. Might be a little large for some, but in terms of just doing that everyday style well, the PRX has to be on here. When they released the green dial earlier this year, it became one of the favorites among the PRX collection, probably only behind the conventional blue dial in terms of popularity. At a C07.11 movement on the inside, pretty standard 80 hour power reserve, powermatic movement from Tissot that is used in honestly millions of watches to this point. Sapphire crystal on top. The same can be said for the PRX quartz in terms of sapphire crystal wearability all being there. Going to be slightly slimmer though in the process. 100 meters of water resistance. I think you will be pretty quick to potentially bring up the Tiffany style dial here. I'm sorry for saying that out loud. I know some people don't like that classification, but it is absolutely there. It's more of this green, teal, blue in terms of what it's going for, but I think it still qualifies for green. And then one honorable mention when looking at Tissot, they have many watches with green dials, but another one I'll mention is the Tissot Gentleman Powermatic 80. These watches in terms of their versatility are even better than the PRX in many ways if you wanna dress up a bit more. Also, in addition to that, the movement is going to have a higher spec movement on the insides. So that's gonna have the Silicium Hairspring also for these watches and are going to be of a higher grade. For our next watch, we have a fan favorite under $1,000, a watch that is almost synonymous with green dials and this brand. We have the Seiko Alpinist. This one is the SPB121. So essentially the successor to the Sarb 017. Following the same format, 39 and a half millimeter case, thickness of 13 millimeters, and a lug to lug of 46 millimeters. Wears more like a 39 on wrist, just given that it is going to be more condensed down in the lug to lug end, but it does have that additional crown that allows the operation of that internal rotating compass bezel. 200 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, and a movement with a 70 hour power reserve on the inside. These watches can essentially do it all, maybe the quirkiness of this with its cyclops, the compass bezel might be a bit too much for others out there, but in terms of being a cult classic and a watch that many associate with Seiko outside of their conventional picks from the diver and dress category, this is one that certainly is going to be towards the top of the list of beloved models from the brand. 
Moving right along with another field-oriented watch, we have the Hamilton Khaki Field Titanium Auto. We saw some different releases this year from Hamilton using titanium as the central case material. This was available in some different dial colors, but the green was one of the leaders in terms of the marketing materials and the messaging that were, they were sending out. And I do think it allows it to separate a bit more than the conventional run of the mill khaki field auto or mechanical that is gonna be available for much less. Titanium case, 38 millimeters in that case size, 11.8 millimeters in thickness, lug to lug of 46 millimeters as well and water resistance rating of 100 meters. Automatic ETA C07.611 with a Nivicron hairspring on the inside. Crystal is going to be sapphire. This watch's ability to take reflections is going to be better with this green dial compared to the black dial. It's not gonna be as nasty with reflections. These watches are kind of notorious for not being the best with legibility on that sapphire crystal end of things. More anti-reflective coating probably would help. But these are some of my favorite watches released this year from Hamilton, and I really do like the green dial especially. So I do wanna mention as we move to this next brand that we are only going to pick one watch per brand that allows us to be more focused, and it makes me make harder decisions. And this was one that was a harder decision. When you think of Rolex and green dial, what do you think of? I think it's safe to say you think of the Hulk. I did not want to include that watch on this list just because we have a whole video actually looking at the Rolex Hulk and some alternatives. So I felt that we wanted to get some new blood in here. And for that, I have the Rolex Oyster Perpetual at 41 millimeters, the reference 124300. This is a watch that is gonna be at that opening door for Rolex in terms of its offering. Although these have been a bit more difficult to of course obtain, just like pretty much every Rolex, but I've been hearing more people get the call as of late. 41 millimeter case, 11.7 millimeter meters in thickness and a lug to lug of 47.5 millimeters. It is gonna wear more condensed on that end. I would say this wears slightly larger than a 40 millimeter case on wrist. Water resistance of 100 meters, pretty standard for the Oyster case. And a movement on the inside, you have the Rolex 3230 movement with a sapphire crystal on top. And for our last watch in the everyday category, we have Moser with the Streamliner Center Second. This is a watch that when you get it in your hands, you get to appreciate much more. So there's a lot of things that are special about this watch. You have the HMC 200 movement on the inside, the green dial, but the big thing for me, when you handle this watch in person for the first time, it stands out the most, is going to be the bracelet. The links on this bracelet are very unique. They have some strange and unconventional just tolerances and ways that it drapes around the wrist. The fine brushing and attention to detail on the inner parts of the links are spectacular when you're flipping this underneath the light. It is very cool to see this one just doing a wrist roll. Just a general wrist roll with this watch is spectacular. Water resistance of 120 meters. Case size is going to be 40 millimeters. I would say it wears slightly larger than that at a 41 millimeter. Uh, thickness of 11.8 millimeters, so relatively thin considering the automatic caliber on the inside. So moving right along to the diver category, we have the Citizen Promaster Diver Automatic. This is known as the Fugu model, a model family that has several different iterations. But the green dial option is certainly one of the favorites. These watches were now finally released for the US market. This previous year. And I think people are starting to catch on to their positioning, although perhaps falling behind something like Seiko when it comes to their general popularity with enthusiasts. 44 millimeter case, thickness of 12.8 millimeters. So that is roughly around a half millimeter thinner than that of the Seiko Turtle as an example. Lug to lug of 50 millimeters. So these are going to wear larger than the Turtle in comparison. So I would say wears like a 42 and a half to 43 millimeters when on wrist. Water resistance of 200 meters. These are ISO compliant dive watches. So true professional dive watches. And if you ever are on a diving trip or on a diving boat, you will find a lot of citizens on the wrist of actual divers. Movement is going to be a Miyota 8204. This is gonna be the three hertz option. It does feature hacking and hand winding and has a sapphire crystal on top. So next up we have the Rado Captain Cook, specifically the 42 millimeter option with its green dial and its green ceramic bezel. The 42 millimeter option is probably misleading in terms of its diameter compared to how it actually wears on the wrist. It is a larger watch, but I personally own a 42 millimeter Captain Cook and it wears closer to a 41 in practice because of the lug to lug of 48.2 millimeters. And also the thickness is pretty compact. You're talking about a watch that also is going to have this more dome sapphire crystal on top. 
Uh, so it is a relatively thin dive wash for also obtaining 200 meters of water resistance at a C07.611 with a 80 hour power reserve and crystal on top is of course, Sapphire as mentioned. Big thing here is just how this wash looks very retro. You have the anchor display at 12 o'clock that does rotate, which adds some visual interest and you know maybe a little bit of a quirkiness to it, but I really like that feature. The tactile feedback when rotating the bezel is solid as well as the audible feedback to go along with it. One of the more overlooked dive watches in the segment without question. When it comes to Longines and green dials, there are several watches to go for, even from the diver category. I was looking at maybe considering mentioning the Hydro Conquest, which is going to be cheaper, but I wanted to go for something that we haven't mentioned as much on the channel, and that is the Legend Diver in bronze. So this adds two points of differentiation. One is going to, be, of course, be the compressor style case with its internal rotating bezel. This was used in the past as a way to ensure that the elapsed time is not gonna be knocked when in these aquatic environments where it would be very easy to knock your watch and have the elapsed time indicate the wrong time. So this was a safety feature for those times where a diver computer was not in existence yet. And also that this has a bronze case. This is not something that Longines will utilize quite often, but when it does utilize it, I think it does it well. And the Legend Diver, I think is probably the best format for them to do so. Uh, I just like how this watch just looks with that kind of Fume effect with the green dial. You have the bronze case. This watch does wear large though. You're talking about 42 millimeters in diameter, but the lug to lug on this thing is enormous, 52.3 millimeters. So it's gonna wear like a 43 to 44 millimeter watch on wrist, 300 meters of water resistance. So more than enough here, proprietary ETA caliber on the inside produced for Longines, A31.L11, extended 70 hour power reserve, a very solid robust movement and a sapphire crystal on top. Now for one of my favorite watches from Tag Heuer, and this is the Aqua Racer Professional 300 in titanium. Now the Aqua Racer, I have always just liked the looks of. I think people are quick to overlook it, including myself. I think I need to do a full review on the Aqua Racer in the future. This is one that is gonna be more expensive than the conventional one, but in terms of just the design, I don't know what it is, but I've always just liked the way that the Aqua Racer looks. This has a titanium case. You're talking about a 43 millimeter option. It is going to wear smaller than that with its 49.7 millimeter lug to lug and lightweight on the wrist. 12.2 millimeters for the thickness, which is really nice to see in a 300 meter dive watch. Movement is the ETA 2824. So that is going to be the main thing people are going to be bringing up when looking at this watch compared to something like the Black Bay and say just above it with something like Breitling or maybe looking at the Omega Seamaster Diver 300. But still, I think this watch is a nice consistent Consideration. I like the look of the dial, especially in green with the more cold hues that come with a titanium case. And as we just mentioned, the Omega Seamaster Diver 300. So in 2022, we saw the release of a new dial variation of this model family with a green dial following the trends that we talked about in the intro of green just being on fire. But this is one of the watches that I think looks fantastic in this configuration. With the green wave dial, it is a great thing to look at. It has that glossy tone to it with the green ceramic on the outside with the bezel. It just simply works. Case size is pretty conventional. If you've ever seen this channel before, you've probably heard of this rundown. 42 millimeters with its case size. I would say it wears true to that size with the helium escape valve on the opposing crown side of the watch. Thickness of 13.5 millimeters, lug to lug of 49.7 millimeters, water resistance of 300 meters. The loom is simply fantastic on this watch. ISO compliant, a true professional dive watch. And movement on the inside is the Omega 8800. This is the single barrel option of the coaxial family of calibers. Still is going to be a Meta certified, 60 hour power reserve. One of the best mass produced luxury movements that you're gonna find on the market. No question about it. And to close out our dive category, we have the Glasshuta Original CQ at 39 and a half millimeters. This watch is available in some different dial colors. Green is going to be the most eye-catching and offers a nice dichotomy with the more refined looks that this diver presents. As mentioned, 39 and a half millimeter case. I would say this wears really close to that of the Tudor Black Bay 58 when you have this on wrist. It reminded me of that completely when putting it on. Thickness of 12 millimeters, lug to lug of 47 millimeters, water resistance of 200 100 meters, but a big star of the show here also is the automatic Glasshuta 3911 on the inside. 
beautiful movements with its geo signs rotor, uh, the array of bridges and the looks. This is a utilitarian type of package with a movement with the utmost refinement. One of the best looking movements under $10,000 to be honest with you. Geo just delivers when it comes to their movements in this price range. And for our final category, we have the refined category. So this is something that has a bit more of a dress focus, but not so far in that end. I wanted to use this as a more of an encapsulating type of uh, group of watches, just because I didn't think it made as much sense to have a chronograph category and some of the other conventional categories. So this was a good way to package them together. A good way to sum up what I think this theme is all about is with the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date Servo Volante, our first watch on this list here for this category. This is a watch that was newly released for 2022. It comes in with a 38 millimeter case, which I think is a great size for a wide variety of wrists. In the past, we saw, of course, the 36 millimeter option and the 40 millimeter option available for the Big Crown Pointer Date family. This splits the difference, offers up essentially a split down the middle in terms of its case dimensions and proportions, 12.5 five millimeters in its thickness. Lug to lug is also gonna be condensed down to 45.5 millimeters, wearing very true to that 38 millimeter size. Water resistance of 50 meters. Some might like to see 100 meters of water resistance here, just since it is more into the everyday category. But this is where the refinement comes in. You have the cathedral style handset, more heritage inspired in terms of its configuration, as well as its use of a complication that is commonly associated with vintage watches of say the 1930s and 40s, but also watches that are typically a bit more dress oriented, but this watch just pulls it off. I love the way that this one looks. It's probably my favorite collection from Oris. It just is unlike anything else in the price category. And I think it has its own design DNA that is unique for this $2,000 price range. Next we have JLC with the Reverso Tribute in a green dial. The Tribute has now seen a few different dial colors come out. We saw the blue dial variants with its more sunburst finish, the red burgundy version, and now we have seen the green dial version. I'm not sure which one I like the most, uh, but this is certainly one when talking about green dial watches that comes to mind very quickly from a dress watch perspective. Green is a dial color that is generally pretty hard to make look dressed up and buttoned up. But the Reverso does it with flying colors here with this tribute configuration. Case size of 27.4 millimeters by 45.2 millimeters. In terms of a circular case equivalent, I would say this wears like a 38 to a 39 millimeter on wrist. Thickness is 8.5 millimeters, so relatively thin is going to slide underneath a wide variety of dress cuffs. So living up to its reputation here. Water resistance, don't be jumping in the pool with this one. I don't think I have to warn you here, 30 meters. And moving on the inside, this is a manual on caliber, the 822 slash two. Moving to our next watch here, this is a watch that I liked immediately when I saw the press photos of it, but when I saw it in person, I loved it even more. I'm even further on the bandwagon. I actually want one of these watches now, and this is the Breitling Premier B09. I've always liked the Premier collection ever since it was reintroduced in the last few years. It just looks very classic heritage Breitling. It's also a nice mix from the classic Navitimer and it's more aviation route pieces. It's more of an underrated collection of watches and one that maybe isn't as commonly associated with the brand, but the history of the line goes back uh, just as long, actually longer than the Navitimer, things like the Super Ocean. The word Premier has been long established in Breitling's history. This is my favorite of all the Premier models. 40 millimeters, so it's going to wear great on a wide variety of wrists. I'd say it wears pretty true to that size. 13 millimeters in thickness. This does have a manual wound caliber on the inside, the Breitling B09, essentially taking a manual wound version of their B01 architecture and making it wear really well on the wrist. When you look at the landscape of mechanical chronographs under $10,000, many of them outside of the El Primero are going to be over 13 millimeters thick. This one wears pretty compact, all things considered, and it looks simply fantastic. The by compact layout of this design with the green dial, it has the perfect fusion of some funk with refinement. That is how I would sum up the B09. It's a Breitling watch that is not conventional Breitling, but that is okay with me. I think it also goes to show that they're really hitting their stride when it comes to some of their new designs. One of my favorites from the brand, without a doubt. So when you think of IWC, you commonly are going to probably associate their pilot watches, the big pilot with the brand. These are fundamental pillars of their history 
and their reputation. But another model family that I think needs to be considered at times and maybe is overlooked in certain moments is the Portugieser collection. Specifically here, we're looking at the IWC Portugieser chronograph with a green dial. So this is a watch that was unveiled in the last few years. I think it's one of the more tasteful variations of this Portugieser family. The symmetry here is great. Some people don't like the cutoff numerals for part of the dial, but I just think this is a beautiful looking watch. 41 millimeters in its case size. I would say that it wears slightly more compact than that, more like a 40 and a half millimeter, thickness of 13 millimeters, water resistance of 30 meters, and an automatic IWC 69355 on the inside with an open case back to showcase the movement to go along with it. This watch is also refined in its approach, doesn't have the same unconventional use of the shade of green, like the B09, I'd say probably easier to dress up in comparison to that Breitling, but still very much uh, its own flair and a watch in terms of a chronograph configuration that is just well put together. And for our last watch here, we have the Grand Seiko SBGJ251. So this is one of their higher level elegance collection GMTs. And with that being the case, it has their high beat movement on the inside. So uh, the 9S86, you'll see with something like the SBGM221, that's gonna have the 66. This is that five hertz version of that movement. High beat, something that Grand Seiko has been utilizing since the 1960s. And this moves along with that heritage they have in producing watch movements of the type. 39 and a half millimeter case, thickness of 14.1 millimeters. Still wears more compact than that on the wrist. I would say this does have some elegant upside despite its eye catching dial. Lug to lug of 46.9 millimeters and a water resistance rating of 30 meters. This is why this one is under the elegance collection. And the 9S86 movement on the inside beating at five hertz and offering 55 hours of power reserve. But all right, guys, that is my list looking at some of the best green dial watches on the market. Of course, I could not cover everything, as I mentioned, so don't get mad at me if I did not include one of your favorite picks. I will link to the article down below where you can see some more options that you could take a look at if you like green dials. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. If you give this a thumbs up, that's a good indication that you want us to extend this whole series looking at watches of different dial colors. And if you want to see that, maybe give a recommendation in the comments about what dial color you would like to see next. Also, if you see another person leave a comment about a certain dial color, uh, maybe give it a thumbs up as well, because that'll be an indication that more people want to see that in the future, but really would appreciate any feedback on this. Also definitely check out teddybaldesar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And for a limited time, you can also get a Ashland Leather Company wallet with your purchase. It's only gonna be good for the first handful of people. It'll say if it's still gonna accept the promo code or not. But these are fantastic wallets produced in the United States and utilizing some of the best leathers out there in the world. But all right guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.